In this video we dive into the smartwatch world with the TicWatch Pro 5 from Mobvoi. I have followed this brand since the day when I was using LG and Fossil smartwatches. But with these brands now out of the smartwatch game and Samsung taking the lead, the Wear OS landscape has significantly changed. Let's see how it holds up to competition after almost a year. The color I have here is called Sandstone. It looks really beautiful as it kind of has the vibe of what resembles a natural titanium color, which seems to be pretty trendy right now. The watch is pretty light at around 40 44 grams as the body is made from aircraft grade aluminum, while the bezel is made from stainless steel with a textured top and shiny inner circle, which looks really nice in the sunlight. The whole watch is certified with military standard durability and 5 atmosphere water resistance rating. It has only two buttons, one of them doubling as a rotary crown that has a really smooth rotation with haptic feedback, and also is stable enough to avoid accidental input. On the rear middle ring you will find an array of sensors, with charging connector on the side for wired charging. The stock silicon band is quite comfortable, but it catches things like pet hair quite easily, and in terms of quality it does not compare to something from Apple or Samsung, but you can easily swap it out for any 24mm standard watch band. TicWatch Pro 5 is still probably one of the most powerful Wear OS watches out there, featuring the 4 nanometer Snapdragon wearable chipset paired with 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. It has a ton of sensors packed into it for combined fitness tracking, as well as NFC for contactless payments. The screen is a 1.43 OLED display with 466 by 466 resolution, covered with Corning Gorilla Glass. But the most interesting part is the ultra low power display, which is a unique feature adopted by TicWatch since the TicWatch 3 Pro. Instead of using the OLED as always on display, you can save power by using the digital clock on secondary display, which is looking similar to a G-Shock watch, and when you lift your hand, it turns on the backlight for viewing in the dark. The backlight can be changed to one of 18 available colors. TicWatch Pro 5 has a giant 628mAh battery, which makes it the biggest one from Wear OS watches, and the advertised endurance promises up to 80 hours. Sadly, the watch has no wireless charging, but the magnetic cable should bring it up to 65% charge in just around 30 minutes. It also shows you the two decimals of the battery percentage to demonstrate how fast it goes. The features of TicWatch Pro 5 presents it as a great watch for sports and outdoor activities. On the watch itself you will find all the health related apps starting with Tic for everything you can imagine, and one too many. Luckily there is also one tap measurement option to read all your vital data at once, in case you don't want to get it overly complicated. To test the accuracy, I went for a hike around the lake to gather some data while taking some other watches with me too. With Galaxy Watch side by side, the GPS tracking was pretty accurate, with minor differences possibly due to the reception. During the workout the low power display comes handy, as it changes the backlight based on your heart rate intensity, ranging from blue to red, if you reach the maximum. While hiking, the TicWatch also drew up a map on the exercise screen, which I was hopeful to review after the hike, but it was simply not displayed in the summary when viewing in the Mobile Help app. Comparably, Samsung had all the map data shown, so for some reason not all workout types end up with the same detailing on the workout parameters, so tracking can be a hit or miss. Sleep tracking also works as expected, and while the watch is sporting a skin temperature sensor, it does not give you a specific temperature reading, but instead it tracks the changes of the temperature throughout the sleep. It also supports sync with third-party services currently limited to Google Health and Strava. The watch comes with Wear OS currently still at version 3.5, with version 4 update yet to be announced, which is about time. Surely it brings only minor changes, and for most users, they likely won't notice a difference. The UI is stock Wear OS just like something you would find on a Pixel watch. The navigation happens with two buttons, where single press on upper button brings you to recent apps, while double press is a shortcut for Google Wallet. If you press the crown it opens the app drawer or works as a home button. Clicking both together does a screenshot, and sadly there is still no official support for Google Assistant or button remapping without third-party software. Thanks to the powerful hardware I never really faced any lag or slowdown, and the navigation was extremely smooth and responsive. There is a power saving feature called Essential Mode, which goes together very well with the ultra low power display. With this feature enabled, you can significantly extend the battery life by sacrificing some smart parts of the watch, while still being able to track steps, heart rate and so on. 
There is even an option that lets you schedule to automatically activate this mode to save battery while sleeping. For me, battery averages to about 2 to 3 days with constant heart rate and stress monitoring enabled, and the usage may vary, depending on how you combine it or schedule it with essential mode. Unsurprisingly, for pairing, you don't need Wear OS app. Even if you start pairing it there, you will be redirected to download Mobboy Health app automatically. And this is what upset me the most. I can understand this kind of approach as Samsung did the same with its Galaxy Wearable app when Galaxy Watch 4 first came out. But the issue with Mobboy Health app is its lack of functionality. There are basic customization options where you can change things like watch face from the app, adjust some settings and so on. But for most people it would be fine. But if you are a power user or coming from a Galaxy watch like me, then you will be upset of how limited the customizability is. For example, I usually follow how much battery I have left, but to actually see which apps or functions are consuming it is not possible, so I'm not even able to pull some useful metrics. The TicWatch Pro 5 still remains a decent competitor in the Wear OS market, and it will probably be the best choice for an Android user, unless of course you're a Galaxy user. Being almost a year old, it still has the latest generation of wearable chipset that Qualcomm has to offer, and it also delivers very good battery life paired with the dual display technology that makes it truly unique and useful. Build materials could be more premium, with the competition now sporting sapphire glass and more durable steel frames. Overall the design is pretty refined, classy, while not too flashy. And the biggest drawback of this watch is the software. It comes nowhere near the functionality and customizability that the Galaxy Watch has, and the future of software updates can also seem a bit questionable. With the current price tag being around $260, it is quite affordable, but for a bit more, Galaxy Watch 6 Classic could be a good alternative. Let me know your thoughts on the TicWatch Pro 5 and what kind of smartwatch are you using?